Welcome back, Yizzle. Ryan Hizzle here with the Wizzle Fizzle. We're going to start off today's video by talking about that extreme snowstorm that has dropped 35 inches of snow so far for people in New England. It's starting to move out of here, so we're going to talk about how that's going to wrap up. And then we're going to talk about another snowstorm that may affect the Great Lakes region within the next couple of days. And that's going to be followed up by a look at the medium range models, which are all signaling towards an extremely active pattern as we go forward. We may also be getting that polar vortex coming down that's been talked about all winter. So buck in because it's about to get interesting, all right? So without further ado, let's get right into the whistle. All right, like I said, we're going to start up here in New England talking about our massive snowstorm that just went through. It's still chugging along up here in Augusta, Maine. A lot of southwestern Maine is getting heavy snow right now. Check these out. These are some heavy snow bands moving into Lewiston, going over I-95 right now. We do have that pesky rain snow line here on the coast, but a lot of places north of the coast are getting snow, and that's what was expected. We have lingering snow showers all the way through Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York. Syracuse is getting a pretty good snow band right now, but some of the hard hardest hit areas down here in southern New York, Long Island, northern New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts are finally starting to see a break. These are the areas that just got absolutely, literally buried in snow. I told you I was coming, New York City, Snowtown. Allentown, Pennsylvania is Snowtown and a half, and it's still snowing here in Allentown. Check this out. We're going to have backside snow showers, everything from flurries to heavy snow bands all day from Allentown all the way to Tom's River, New Jersey, and some places in this region may end up with 40 inches of snow. Speaking of how many inches of snow people got, let's check that out. Looky here, just north of Allentown, 35.5 inches so far. It's still snowing there. New York City ended up with 19 inches of snow, also around 19 or 20 inches near Scranton, Pennsylvania. Now, Boston was a tough one. There were some sharp cutoff lines there. If you're in eastern Boston, you probably only got three or four inches. But if you're in western Boston, you got 8.5. And if you go just a little bit to the north and to the west, you got 19 inches. Here, 14.8 inches all the way out in Long Island. Now, now, this same system also dumped a bunch of snow the other day in Chicago. Look here at 12 inches, 11 inches, 13 inches. Uh, it really overperformed in this area, but it very much underperformed to the south. Three inches in Paxton, Illinois, 4.2 inches in Crescent City, Illinois. These people were supposed to get close to a foot as well. And here's some pictures we got in our official Storm Seekers Discord server. That's right, we got a Discord server now. Go hit it up. Link in the description. Marty Stein sent this one in from York, Pennsylvania. Jack Porter sent this in from New Jersey. <laughs> And Lord have mercy, look at that, son. We also got some cool stuff on Twitter. Michael from Wayne County, Pennsylvania has a beautiful video of some snowfall. And check out this picture of New York. They got about 20 inches of snow and it just looks beautiful in Central Park. And here's another picture from Randolph, New Jersey. Oh my God, look at that. Wouldn't you, didn't, don't you guys wanna see that? Wouldn't you like to look out your door and see that? Well, there may be a chance for some of us because I'm telling you guys, that weather pattern is just now starting to crank up. We're all about to be in Snowtown, baby. Snizzle, tizzle, bizzle. Nah, I'm gonna stop that now. <laughs> okay, let's check out the NAM model and look at that next storm we've got coming for the Great Lakes area. Here's our first storm cranking away over there, 988 millibar low pressure system. This ended up stronger than what we thought it was gonna be. It's one of the reasons why some people are gonna get 40 inches of snow. Let's put this into motion. Our first storm is almost completely out of here by 4 a.m. on Thursday, February 4th, just in time for our secondary storm to start really affecting the central part of the United States. Check it out, we've got heavy snow in Nebraska now. South Dakota, North Dakota, working into Minnesota here. We've also got heavy snow in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario up here in Canada. And as we put this in motion, this southern low really takes control, bringing some rain from southeastern Iowa all the way down into Texas. A nice little frontal boundary here with some cold air invection behind it. And a warm front out in front of it, the southeastern part of the United States is going to get a really quick shot of warm air. But check this out. We've got heavy backside snow in northern Iowa, southern Minnesota, and northwestern Wisconsin, and that's going to work into the the upper peninsula of Michigan too and it's pretty heavy there and there's a sharp area of cold air coming behind it so that switch over if you're starting off as rain down here it's that switch over is going to be really quick here's that low pressure system a 988 millibar 984 now as it's just to the north and west of Chicago bringing heavy rain to the southeast and heavy snow to Michigan now the upper peninsula of Michigan is getting absolutely clobbered at 1 a.m. on February 5th by heavy snow and then that moves on to the north with maybe a very marginal risk of some severe weather 
weather down here in Dixie Alley. And it's trying to start off as snow up here in the northeast in Pennsylvania, upstate New York. And of course, with that sharp cold front, we've got backside snows trying to work into Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. We can push this on a little bit further and watch this. This low kind of stalls out here. So the upper peninsula of Michigan is going to get a lot of snow from this more than likely. And it tries to snow pretty heavily in eastern Pennsylvania, northeastern Pennsylvania, and upstate New York. And that's going to move into Vermont and Maine. And that's as far as the NAM goes. Here's a look at those snowfall totals. Two to four inches is possible in Nebraska. Two to four inches across much of Iowa. With a little area here that could see six inches or more, the heaviest snow falls in southeastern Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin, and the upper peninsula of Michigan. Western Michigan here may need to watch out for a little bit of extra snow thanks to the lakes. I don't think it's going to be much of a problem for the northeast, but we will keep our eye on it, especially after that first storm moves out. But yeah, that's how this next storm is going to impact us. Now, let's take a look at the medium range. Okay, starting out here on the Euro model. This is where it starts to get exciting, guys. Okay, everybody get ready. All right, buckle in. Get loosened up. All right. Let's play this out. Here's our current storm. Okay, we're going to whoop, get it out of here. It was nice knowing you with that 40 inches of snow, but we're ready to move on, especially us here in the southeast and the Midwest. We want our share. All right, let's kick it forward. Here's that second storm that we just talked about on the Euro. It looks really similar to what the NAM is showing. So there's really not a lot to go off of there. But look, look at this cold air coming in behind it. We've got the 540 line all the way down at Memphis, Tennessee. And we've got some thermal packing going on around February 6th in the Rockies. That's going to try to bring down even more cold air with it. And it's going to try to link up with the disturbance down here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is the dream scenario for a massive winter storm on the East Coast. We have an intense area of high pressure and extreme cold temperatures coming down from Canada, meeting up with abundant moisture and a low pressure system already formed in the Gulf of Mexico. This is how much of your major blizzards that you remember from the 90s and, and so on and so forth, this, this is how they were formed. Now, I don't wanna get you too excited because as you can see, this is 132 hours away. This will change, but buddy, is this fun to look at? Watch this. That cold air and that low pressure system can Converge, and we have a massive snowstorm for Kentucky, Tennessee, Northern Georgia, Northwestern South Carolina, Western North Carolina, all of Virginia, all of West Virginia, Ohio. And then this little disturbance is going to phase with it up here around the Northeast. And it's going to literally bomb out and become a historic blizzard that we will tell our kids about. But remember, this is not my forecast. This is just a, there's a possibility that this can happen. It's small right now, but Look at that, a 970 millibar low pressure system off the coast of New York City there, bringing blizzard conditions to Delaware, Maryland, much of Pennsylvania, much of New York, um, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. I mean, it's literally um, just crazy. And then look at this giant wedge of cold air coming in behind it. This would be the coldest air that any of us in this area have seen probably since 2017 or 2018. And we have a massive storm structure here that stretches all the way back into Canada and all the way down to Mexico. And then if I play and then and then if I play that out, watch, it just winds up 968 millibars. That's the lowest it gets. And then that goes on out and we're still stuck with our major cold air over here in the Great Lakes region. And then what's this? Another storm, February 9th. Okay, this is, a, this is showing another storm trying to cause some major snow for Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee. Once again, Northern Alabama, Northern Jersey, Kentucky, West Virginia, Ohio. I mean, like this right here would be another one uh, that would be, uh, you know, probably a very memorable storm. Not necessarily a blizzard, uh, but definitely bringing some uh, major snowfall totals to a lot of people in the south that don't usually get it. And then that is the last frame of the Euro. Wow, what a Euro run, huh? Let's take a look at those temperatures as they come down. Uh, check this out, wow. On February 8th at 7 a.m., we've got negative 30 degrees in Northern Minnesota. We're near zero degrees all the way in Northern Georgia. Single digit temps for everybody up here in the Northeast and the Ohio Valley. Iowa's getting in on that negative 20 degree stuff. As low as 15 degrees in Northern Florida, closer to 10 degrees right here near Mobile, Alabama. Just some absolutely incredible stuff going on on the Euro. And of of course, if we look at those total snowfall um, numbers, uh, it's snowmageddon, all right? It's snowmageddon um, everywhere in here. This is the Kuchera snowfall totals, and oh my goodness, oh my god, oh my god, he on X Games mode. <laughs> Buddy, if I've ever told you to take a screenshot of something, this is the one you need to take a screenshot of. Save it. Um, it almost certainly will not come out um, like this. But remember, the storm that we're talking about right now, the one that's dropping 40 inches in New Jersey, we were talking about that one about a week and a half ago, saying like, ah, that probably won't happen. So 
there's a chance. And the Northeast gets clobbered. Uh, some of the areas that are seeing 40 inches of snow right now here in Eastern Pennsylvania and Northwestern New Jersey, uh, how would you like to see 45 more inches of snow? Another two feet in New York City. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, once again, an absolutely insane system showing up on the 12Z Euro, but that's the Euro. I have some bad news. The rest of the models don't agree yet. Okay, let's check out the latest version, the 12Z GFS, okay? Watch what happens. Our first storm gets completely out of here, and then our second storm comes in. Once again, uh, all the models are pretty confident in the, in the way this one's gonna work out, so we don't need to talk about that too much more. Our cold air is in place. Here comes this nice elongated boy out of Canada, and we got some nice bubbly action action going on down here in the Gulf of Mexico. What's going to happen? The GFS, is it going to do it? Is it going to do it? And no. So what happens here with the GFS is for some reason, uh, these two pieces of energy don't combine. Uh, the cold air doesn't come as far south. Uh, the there is no there is no initialization of low pressure here in the Gulf of Mexico, at least not to the same degree as with the Euro. There is still a storm here. This is the same storm we were just looking at on the Euro, but for some reason, uh, this one is just being batted away by the cold air. So we're left with a clipper in the Ohio Valley and northeast, and a little rainstorm in the Carolinas and Florida. Um, according to the GFS, but we still have some pretty significant cold air coming down, especially for the Great Lakes region, uh, but it's not quite as impressive as what the Euro was showing, and it doesn't go nearly as far south. But if we play this on out, the GFS does see another storm, and this looks oddly similar to that second storm that we were looking at on the Euro, okay? So a pretty significant storm for Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, and then, you know, that's a, that's a significant southern slider right there. And then that does try to bring down some cold air a little bit further south, but once again, not nearly as extreme as the Euro. And then as we keep on pushing it out, another storm comes through right on the end there. So definitely an active pattern. The Euro shows one solution, the GFS shows another, but what they agree on is we're gonna have some very cold air coming down from Canada, and we're gonna have tons of opportunities for massive blockbuster storms as we go forward. There's a possibility we all might be in Snowtown, baby. I don't know, but comment down below if you wanna be in Snowtown because <laughs> and the snowfall totals for the GFS are still impressive, uh, especially for the Midwest. Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, a lot of this area right here that hasn't seen snow in a long time gets their fair share, but this is not nearly, not nearly as impressive as the Euro. So uh, we're throwing this one in the trash. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you are excited about the opportunities to come, but I hope you are not too excited because there's still a lot of time between now and those major snowstorms that we could possibly have. What I'm showing you is just model guidance. It's probably not gonna happen exactly the way that we just saw it. In fact, it's definitely not gonna happen the way we just saw it, but we have something to track. We have something to keep our eyes eyes on and that's the fun you know that's what this channel's for we're having fun if you're having fun make sure you slap a like on this video okay i really appreciate it subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you join this channel i've opened up memberships on this channel and we already have like 50 members if you're a member you get access to all kinds of cool stuff and we have our own exclusive little chat area in the discord server and you can use these awesome emojis that i worked really hard on so consider joining there's a link in the description and also there should be a button next to the subscribe button that you can click all right also, my storm chasing truck wrap is almost finished in the design phase. Here's what it looks like. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And I'm going to skedizzle now. We'll see you next tizzle. Get bizzle. Whoop.